Hey, what's up everyone? It's Jay. This is Comfy Fat. <sighs> Today I'm just gonna kind of shoot the shit with you and try to have fun with it. So if you do not know, Comfy Fat is a YouTube channel where I vlog about my life with Carissa, uh, who's also Fat Girl Flow. While I've had a lot of fun doing the vlogs and stuff, I'm also finding that our lives just aren't really like all that interesting. The conversations that we have are super interesting. Uh, but we live in the Midwest, we work from home, I do freelance writing stuff and uh, blogging and vlogging and hang out with the dogs. We don't go to a lot of like big fun events. So I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with this channel. I asked on Instagram what you all might want to see from me, what you're looking for, what you're hoping for from the Comfy Fat channel and I got some really great responses. So. Uh, overwhelmingly people would like to see me cook for them I am NOT a great cook and when I said that in response people said that might be even better and more interesting because uh, it'd be fun to watch me learn how to cook um, other folks said they want to see more vlogs with me and Carissa some folks said that they want to see us do some challenges I think we do have that in our future one thing that I found interesting someone asked for me to talk about navigating the healthcare system as a fat person it's hard that's the thing is I've avoided going to the doctors for many years in the past because I was afraid to have to deal with the fat phobia and there is fat phobia I mean there have been times when I've been told that I uh, when I came in for an issue that it was because of my weight when it clearly was not I've been given advice on how to lose weight without asking for it I've also been told that I would be a great candidate for gastric bypass surgery when I went in there for a mole removal so these are things that <laughs> uh, are kind of minor in the grand scheme of things uh, as consequences of fat phobia in the medical industry but something I've learned to do on my own is to do research when I'm finding which place I want to go to. Luckily I found a healthcare place um, that I love here in Kansas and while the policies are different because Kansas um, healthcare policies are different than Massachusetts, the actual venue itself and the equipment they use is actually very accessible so they have you know those big tables that you have to get on when you go to the doctors um, they have ones that start really low and you sit on them and then they lift up and they're really um, they have a high weight limit so that's awesome when I had to give a urine sample uh, recently because that's difficult for some fat people um, I found that it was really hard to ask for help with that and luckily Carissa helped me and so she said you know peeing in a cup is kind of hard for Jay is there anything else we can do. Uh, they went and got me a hat is what they call it and it's basically like a bowl that you like put in the seat in the toilet seat and you pee in it and then put that in the cup and that's so much easier. I don't know why everyone doesn't do that. So it's called a hat so I don't know why. Ask for that if giving a urine sample is difficult for you. I think it all comes down to really like learning how to advocate for yourself and that is hard. There's no other way to prep for it other than to um, come up with phrases that you want to have for yourself ahead of time so you can say them to doctors if anything comes up so uh, when asked to give my weight by getting on a scale I said I actually would prefer not to can I just tell you what I weigh and they said yes you're actually not required to always give your weight when you walk in it's just like kind of they just want to keep track for some reason but um, you can say no I do think that Navigating the medical industry is really difficult and um, scary too. So coming up with the responses that you have uh, prepared for potential things that your doctor might say that's fatphobic, that's one thing. Also doing research into the place that you go to get your healthcare um, and seeing if it's possible to find an accessible um, building that has more up-to-date technology and stuff, uh, that might be a good thing. And also doing some research. And what I mean by that is having research on hand to give to doctors about any type of medical issue that you think um, would be helpful to build your case against fat phobia in the, in the medical industry uh, is wonderful. So not that you necessarily have to have it on hand, but referencing um, medical journals or big articles that have come out to talk about experiences of people with eating disorders or cases in which medical fat phobia has really impacted them um, could help you feel like you have an arsenal of um, support backing you for what you say to your doctor. I'm super new to fat activism really in the grand scheme of things so I'm not like an expert but this is just like my advice and my experience and um, 
hopefully y'all can take something from it. What else did people want to hear about? Somebody wanted to know about accessible clothing for fat, masculine, or more androgynous style. I mean, to start off, androgynous does not have to mean masculine specifically, but in this case, this person was asking for masculine clothing, menswear um, for fat people, and especially fat people who are above like a size 26 in uh, plus size. So the places that I like to get clothing from are King Size Direct, Destination nice. XL, ASOS, and Bad Rhino. JCPenney also has some clothing that I love. Their big and tall section is getting better and better. I think for all of these brands, their big and tall sections are getting uh, better and they don't just have um, gray sweatpants anymore. Uh, they're starting to get much more trendy and cool and cute. So uh, definitely check out that like, that's my like top five JCPenney, Bad Rhino, ASOS, Destination XL, and King Size Direct. And those are all online shopping, by the way. I don't go in store to any of those because I can't. How to deal with coworkers who are racist and homophobic. I have only experienced this one time. Uh, well, not one time. I've experienced this once with a specific coworker um, a few years ago at a place that I worked at where he was clearly racist. He was um, from an older generation and that's not an excuse. Uh, it's just to put it in perspective, he was sort of grandfathered into the place that I was working at. Um, how I dealt with it is I started taking notes. Uh, you really have to have very specific examples of when comments have occurred that have made you feel uncomfortable, have been racist or have been homophobic or any of those things because you need to be able to prove when and where they happened and the more detailed notes you have, the better. So I would write down who said it, when it was said, the quote, um, what your response was. Um, and keep it in your phone or something. You definitely don't want this to be like a notebook that could be left around and found anywhere. Um, and then at that point, you might need to take that to either your supervisor or the supervisor above them. And that's because it becomes less complicated when you bring it to a higher, uh, when you bring it to someone who's in a higher position of power, um, who does not also supervise that person because then they can have a more objective look at it and it also keeps your identity safe. So even bringing things to your HR department uh, might be the best route to go because then they can work from there on how to handle those situations. And maybe it'll end up in a mandatory training. Maybe that person will be uh, approached about it. Maybe there will be a mediation that happens, who knows? Um, but bringing those specific concrete examples of the racism that you've seen or witnessed or the homophobia that you're hearing um, and bringing that to HR or people above you and the person who's saying it, um, that's the best way to go. Um, if you have the privilege, you can always quit and find another place to work so that you're safe and comfortable. Uh, not everyone can do that. So anyway, that's it. That's all today. Uh, that's all for today. I think um, I have to go take care of my dogs, but uh, thanks for watching and supporting. Um, if you like the content you're getting here, please make sure you comment, subscribe, like the video, share with people. The more subs that I get, the more motivated I can be to like really throw myself into it and get you all content that you love. Um, it also helps me financially as I'm only going off of like ads and YouTube doesn't really, you don't really make a lot of money off of YouTube until you have more subscribers. So in all full transparency, the more subscribers, the better. Um, and I don't want to hound you about subscribing, but I do think that if you have a friend that you think might like this kind of stuff, um, just like share a video or send them my way or tag a friend in the uh, comments below. And yeah, let's get connected. Let's talk. Thanks for watching. Again, I'm Jay, this is Comfy Fat. I make videos sometimes, and I will see you all next time. All right, hearts and rainbows, bye.